Hi, I'm Scott Kimball, and welcome to Put a Mic in It. In this episode, we have got a Mohawk Valley legend with us today. This is a guy I've been wanting to interview for some time. I've known him for a very long time, and a fantastic guy, a fantastic musician. I'm sure you're going to love the show. Mr. Stevie Rigo. Thanks for coming on, Stevie. Thanks, Scott. All right, well, I guess we'll start right off. We record here in Little Falls, and this is a bit of a homecoming for you. I pretty much, I went to fifth grade here. I went to um, Church Street School. Then my parents sent me to Catholic school, St. Mary's. I still got the scars to prove it from the nuns. I was going to say, the nun education. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. That's another show, though. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I kind of grew up here. Nice. You know, Church Street, Ann Street, and moved to Alien. My, fa- my father had six kids who were all born in a different uh, town, so that Really? Tells, tells you something about him, I guess. So what were, <laughs> what were some of the other towns your brothers and sisters oh, were born geez. in? Oneana, uh, Port Jervis, New York, uh, Little Falls, Illion, Dowsville, Stittville. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had the New York State region he, covered, that's yeah, for sure. He's a nomad. <laughs> or running from something, I don't know. <laughs> Again, that's a whole other show, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so you are one of the biggest legends in Mohawk Valley music history. You really are. There's, I, I there's no him. doubt about Dave, it. Dave, I paid him to say that. You, you paid him, okay. And right. the check cleared. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't use check cash only, buddy. <laughs> but, but all kidding aside, I mean, you've been doing this for a long time, since the 60s, really. So what were some of your early influences? How old were you when you first picked up your first instrument? And tell us the story. Oh, boy. I think we got started. Um, my father worked. This was in Little Falls. He worked for a guy that um, repaired jukeboxes. So we had like a little record player, just one of those little ones, you know, and um, played 45s and 33s and even 78s. And he used to bring the records home, you know, like Jerry Lee Lewis and Elvis and, um, you know, all the early rocking guys. So that's when we, you know, instead of listening to Perry Como and, uh, how much is that doggy in the window? I was really into the Jerry. We used to pretend we were playing the keyboards and <laughs> Elvis and that. So did, you, did you kick over the chair in the bench? And, I, you know. I think so a couple of times. But <laughs> that's where I first started listening. I was probably only like you know five or six or seven, but I, I just loved it, you know. That's where the rock and roll roots came from. And, and so when did you pick up your first guitar, and what kind was it? Oh, boy. There's a song on, uh, I think it's, yeah, is this the Solar Dwellers? Yeah, the song is called actually called The Solar Dwellers. It tells the story of my life. So, yeah, um, I bought a guitar. This guy had a guitar for sale in school, and uh, he wanted a dollar a week. I think I paid eight dollars for the guitar, so I, I had a paper route. My pedal papers in the sleet and snow, and I have a guitar. I call my own. So uh, that was the first guitar I got. The strings were about that far off the neck. It was just you know, it was, it was, I, right. You know, I think I played Peter Gunn for three years, but. <laughs> But that was the first guitar, and I just, you know, just then, I guess, like everybody, when the Beatles come on, Ed Sullivan, you know, it's like, you know, all the girls, you know, going crazy, going, oh, yeah, oh, I like that. You know? And did anybody ever tell you, speaking of the Beatles, that you look like John Lennon? I get Paul McCartney more, I guess, as I get older. Yeah, well, you know what, you're, you're left-handed like Paul McCartney. I get that a lot. As, as a matter of fact, I've been um, asked to play in some Beatles shows, but... I do a good impersonation of Ringo. You want to hear it? I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's, Dave a, liked it. that's about the extent of Ringo right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. That's it. Exactly, right? Yeah. Well, they, when they came on, uh, <laughs> they came on Ed Sullivan. It was, you know, that that was it, you know. I mean, you know, the, uh, the janitors were saying afterwards how, you know, different smells and stuff and it was just the girls are right. crazy you know and it and it's tough for for kids nowadays to understand just how huge that was because you know back then you had what maybe two three channels on tv ed sullivan was huge that's there was no mtv there was nothing like that so shows like ed sullivan were how you got to actually see musical acts as opposed to listening to them on the radio and when the beatles came over that was like nothing nobody had seen since elvis they didn't even know it was going to be that big when they got off the plane they thought yeah, what, what are all these people doing here? You know. Yeah, they we're not Elvis. No, <laughs> no. but uh, yeah, Ed Sullivan was a yeah, all the. I'm a British Invasion guy. You know, I like the Yardbirds and Beatles and the Stones and the Who. Yeah, who the Who? Oh yeah, <laughs> who, who? I, who? I wore out that Tommy album three times. I think, but 
I like that stuff, you know, because the, the the British invasion guys they listen to the old BBC blues broadcasts. Sure. So and like I say, we were listening to like Patty Page. How much is that doggy in the window? And Clapton and them guys are listening to like uh, Muddy Waters and and you know the blues guys. So they were actually ahead of us. The you know like Jimmy Page, and right, right? Jeff Peck. They were doing the blues before you know we were watching. Uh, Perry Como show, you know, sure, like Robert Johnson, all those guys. Oh yeah, that's where they, they they got it from. So they had kind of a, and the Beach Boys was like the big thing, you know, back then. But the British Invasion was just that was it for me. Yardbirds loved them. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, you picked a pretty good band to like because I mean there was just so many legends that came out of there. Like you said, Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page. Oh. You know, just the, the well, list. Jeff Beck, they're, Jeff all, Beck. they're yeah. all they're all in the yard for it. Right. I mean, I mean that, you want to talk about a band that kind of like just gave birth to everybody else, you know? Not the Beach Boys. Not the Beach Boys, you're right. <laughs> well, that you're right about. But. I was supposed to go see him the other night. And just, yeah, they were playing. Somebody, yeah. somebody wanted me to go with them. I, I, you know, I, I, they do a great show. Oh, yeah. But Mike Love is, I don't know, I, I'm not going to say anything. But it's, it's almost like a, a tribute thing now, you know? I mean, yeah. They didn't play on half. You know the band, the uh, Wrecking Crew, right? Mm-hmm. They they, uh, they did everybody back then. They did like these boots are made for walking. Sure, they, yeah. they played on everything and and you know like Beach Boy stuff. So they didn't. They just come in the studio and they probably got paid, um, you know, studio time. And that was it. But I don't know. I I thought maybe be, I could have went, but to me it would have been like a tribute show. Or something. Right. Right. You know, so, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to go from the Yardbirds to your first band. Who was your first band that you were in? Oh, jeez. You would, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Um, well, the first real band was called Sakes Alive. Do you remember the Mercy Side Five? Yes, I do. Okay, well, they, they were like the big band. My brother was in the band, yep. so it was like we wanted to be like them, you know, so... That that was it. a bunch of guys from Illinois. We played. Um, it talks about it in that song. We we did backyard barbecues and high school dances. You know, I was like, we were on Hank Brown Twistorama. Sure, sure. And, and that's uh, that's a legendary show from the past too. Oh yeah. Well, Hank was something else. He, yeah, he's, he was. He's yeah. WLFH big time. Yes. You know? And he he was a. Did you know Dave that he was a Korean? Um, he got he's wounded. He was a. Well, was I didn't a, know that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I I met him a couple three years ago. Uh, he's at passed. an event. Yeah, yeah he, he did pass what the, within the last year. Used to, I, think. I used to attend bar at the Marine Corps League in Ellion, and he'd have a little uh, like uh, disabled, you know, club back there, disabled vets. And um, we got, because me and him were very good friends, because he remembers me from the show and stuff. And and he never really talked about it, but he, he got, uh, he must have been a little bit older in Korea because he's probably, my father was in World War II, so he's probably, you know, Korea was like, well, fit, Easy there. Don't, don't do it's that. It's, it's, I'm half Italian. Here. Yeah, well, back the water <laughs> away. <laughs> no, water around electronics does not work. Exactly. Listen, folks, I just want to let you know that if you hear <laughs> and, the, and, the, yeah. and the screen goes blank, yeah, just call 911. I'll, I'll yeah. sit on my hands. <laughs> if only we were live. <laughs> it's like, come on. <laughs> but Hank, Hank was, you know, but he was smart, though, because we, you know, young kids, he goes, how would you guys like to be on TV? Oh, well, that'd be great, you know. W or uh, Twist the Rambo was the show. So, well, if you do three or four free um, concerts for us, like at the Dazzle Legion, Alien, you know, you do four or five shows, we put you on TV. So that's how that happened. And we made a little record called Audio Disc. I think it cost $8 a piece. And what you do is you go make that record, and he plays it on Twist the Rambo, and then he had to lip sync to it. So we lip synced. Huh. Yeah, but that's what. Yeah, but that's what a lot of them did back then. Like especially like with American Bandstand stuff. Like, oh, yeah. Mostly, oh, yeah. Everybody was lip syncing because you want, obviously you want to sound your, you know the absolute best, and it's most recognizable from what you know the kids were hearing on the radio. Uh, but still, tremendous opportunity. And what a lot of people don't realize too is just how big back then the bands were, and they were they were playing bands at every like bar. Like you said, Legion high school dances because there was a lot of high school dances back then, right? That was the big thing. Ask your dad sometime. Right in early in New York, okay, be Saturday night. You got the MYF had a band, the Boss Five, uh, Annunciation had a band, the Mercy Side Five, uh, the Illion High School had a band, my band. There was like three bands. It's true. And it cost a quarter or 50 cents to get in. So we'd go around, you know, checking out the girls and stuff. And 
Sure, why not? But, but every place was packed. I mean, you know, now it's like kids haven't got nothing to do, you know. Well, that's another show. But Yeah, uh, but no, gotta, there's, there's yeah. a lot of truth to that, though. We I gotta, mean, there was... We got a lot of another shows, don't we? Just, yeah. Well, I think, <laughs> this is part one, folks, of ten. <laughs> really? But, you know, Mercy Side 5 was big, and Boss 5 was, you know... And, yeah. And we, you know, they always have a big big following, so, you know... Sure. Girls, so we used to go watch them, but... Yeah, because, well, like, my... I, I don't know if you knew it, my father actually played uh, Boss 5. Oh, I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He was a big time drummer. Oh, back Leo, then. I, I I was hoping his name would come up because. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love Leo. I mean, did you ever get to do any gigs with him? Or I think we've I got him up a couple times that I, I think um, we did a that thing at, at the American Legion when um, in Mohawk when that um, one kid was the commandant over there, Rich Monahan. Oh, Rich Monahan. He, I, yeah, he's Monahan. a Vietnam vet. I think your dad was too. Yes. And uh, we always talk about that. We always talk about stuff like that but uh what did, what did your dad play the drums, drums. oh really yes oh leo are you kidding me I, I can't i can't you never knew that i, thought I never I knew that. that all i oh, ever yeah. saw him with was a hockey stick yeah yeah he was he was manhattan the manhattans exactly that was he actually told me a story when he was with the manhattans that they were really close to making it big oh yeah really and the vietnam war was ongoing Stop that and two of them had to go, you know, to go serve. Right. And I guess one of them didn't come back or say, oh. yeah, yeah. And he said that when, when that happened, it just ended wow. it all. Wow. You know? I had and no idea. They were yep. big. The Mercy Side 5 was right there, you know. Just, yeah. You know, a lot of guys, you know. I mean, why is it that we don't have that kind of music here anymore? What's the problem? I, you know, you know what's coming back a little bit? Like, I play it for Tellos in Frankfurt. Brian Zion, I was, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, he has, like, um, Showtime and me and he's you ever seen his venue? He's, oh yeah, there's music almost every night. So yes, that's kind of the the spot right now, Dave. Is uh, for Tullos in Frankfurt. Okay. But as far as the younger, and that's right on Main Street. The younger okay. kids, right. they, they don't. Uh, you know, they don't, a, do they not play? Here's the phone. Yeah, it, it's a different time. I mean, they'll they'll just put, pick up YouTube or or Spotify or Pandora or whatever it is. You know, they're listening yeah, but somebody's going to gonna make that music. It just doesn't pop out of an AI's mouth. Yeah, it, you're right. But I mean, now it's it's a lot of studio driven stuff. Whereas back, and I'm, you'll probably agree with me. Back then, it was a lot of garage bands, and, and kids just kind of learn it as they went along. Everybody's that's in what, a band, and that's what made it so much fun. You were just you were learning, you were playing, and you were having a great time with it. Everybody, mm-hmm. every like your dad was, you know, drums, and everybody was, you know, in a band, you know. Yeah, and that's exactly. I don't. I can't put a finger on it, Dave. I'd have to say a lot of it has to do with the internet and um, the music. These kids are in, into rap and that pretty, you know, that stuff pretty much. And um, as far as the old rock and roll goes, it's funny because I have a lot of kids come out and they say, "Well, can you play any Tommy James and the Shondells?" The guys like, "How do you know about them?" He goes, "Well, my father exactly you know, um, told me to listen to the stuff. I listened to his records. He says, don't, you know, nothing against rap. I, I'm not going to play. No, no, it's, but, yeah. you know, it, it, no, it's, it's music. Just, yeah. 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 But he goes, um, all these kids are coming up. They go, well, where'd you learn? Where'd you hear that? Oh, um, Animal House, you know, or they watch it on TV. <laughs> right. I used to torture my children with Sonny and Cher. So I'm, you know, <laughs> I was a bad dad. <laughs> I, I can't, I, I just can't picture Dave as a Sonny and Cher type. Now yeah. I'll never. No, I, I would play that, you know, or Captain and Tennille, really. I, I would really nail him with that. big time in Captain oh, Tennille. I, ca- oh, I like really. Captain Tennille. Yes, Dave. Love will keep us together. I was just going to say that. I would play I that, just to, gonna say that to wake them up. I like Cher. I don't Sonny, I guess. Nah. <laughs> I'm going to have Love Will Keep Us Together stuck in my head for the rest of the night. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. That's, I appreciate no, no. that. What are you, uh, muskrat, muskrat? Muskrat. Right? Yeah, yeah, muskrat, muskrat love. love. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I used to call him the captain and toenail. Toenail. <laughs> oh, 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 God. <laughs> Look out for that tree. Anyway. <laughs> no, that was sunny. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, yes, I didn't say that. Did oh, I? my goodness. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, no. Oh, so like I said, early or late sixties, early seventies, music scene is booming around here. Uh, we already talked about some of the bigger bands. What were some of the other bigger venues that were a lot of the, the popular places that people were going then? Um, hmm. here's the thing because there was a, so many more bars and, and places to go back back then than there really well, is now. Well, there's a bar on every corner in Little Falls, so yeah. True. Yeah, true, true story. <laughs> Somebody was talking about that the other day. There's like 56 actual bars or something like that, including the legions and that. You couldn't go to each bar and have one drink or you'd be dead. Right. <laughs> you'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. What happened with me is uh, I, I uh, got drafted in the Army in 1970, and um, uh, 
after I, I got out in 72, and then um, I that's when I went on the road and started playing music. I, I started out playing with this Elvis impersonator. His name was Ronnie Reiner. He looked exactly like him and sounded exactly like him. And it was like I went and auditioned for it. And uh, I got, you know, I didn't know, I got the job, you know, because mm-hmm. I knew all the stuff. But we used to play hockey arenas, you know, I mean, up in really? Canada. Really? I did a lot in Canada, yeah. Hmm. Everybody loved Elvis. I mean, sure. it's like, you know. Well, looked, especially then, he was in his comeback tour. Uh, 70. Right? I mean, right around that, that era. Yeah, yeah. Would have been. But they did, the people just went crazy. We had our own fan club and everything, you know. Wow, I, I did uh, not know that. Yeah. I got I, I got scrapbooks, but he was real, real good. I mean, some nights I'd be playing guitar, and I'd look over, and i go. <laughs> he, he looked exactly, he sounded just like him, too. We did all the hits, you know. It was That was fun. Wow. Did that for a while. No and, kidding. So into Canada, hockey arenas, that, that is awesome. Uh, well, I played from Prince Edward Island over to Vancouver, you know. All, really? All, all the United States, yeah. He was big. Wow. No kidding. So after you got done with him, where, where did you go next? Oh, this is funny because uh, we had a, uh, had a trial. Uh, I always liked Buddy Holly a little bit too. And um, there's this band called Rock and Roll Heaven. Remember the song by the the Righteous what, Brothers? Yeah, you, yep. Well, we had a band. The band was it was called Rock and Roll Heaven. And we what we had was um, uh, deceased rock stars. Like we had a Buddy Holly, a uh, Bobby Darin, Jim Croce, Elvis. Um, Otis Redding, Bobby, I think Bobby, you know, anybody that's, there was like maybe 10 of us, you know, and, uh, that's, that's what we did. So I did Buddy Holly. Um, I worked like 15 minutes a night and that's what we did. Then at the end we'd all come out and we'd sing, if you believe in forever. I did that for, I loved it cause it like 15 minutes, you know, and that's then I'm sure I'm, I'm done, you know, easy night. So, and speaking of all that, you know, you sent us a few pictures Dave, if you would, we got a picture of Stevie right here as Buddy Holly. And there it is. Yeah, I should have I should have had that. See, look, my tie. I didn't have a tie clip, so that's why I'm jumping up and down. But there. you know what? It, it, <laughs> gives, it gives it like it's in motion. Like you're, you're already rocking and rolling. You're rocking so hard that you just ripped your tie off, and you're ready to go. Yeah, that was fun. I, <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> it, it looks fun. It looks like it's an awesome time. It really does. Yeah. It really does. It was good. So, a good band behind me, too. You know, that's a big thing. And, uh. That that was you know they, they were on. Remember Tom Snyder? Yeah, yeah. We were on the that, TV show. We we're on that show. We we're on a couple other show, big shows. Really? Wow. Our manager used to tell us, "Well, tell them that you had plastic surgery, you know, to look like the, you know." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's good. So who was the manager? You got to tell me. Um, <laughs> Gabe Garland was his name. His real name was Gambino. Ah. Okay. There you go. He was. Uh, that's another show. <laughs> show, show eleven. Show, show number eleven. He had like uh, the box tops, the drifters, the coasters. He'd just buy these names of the bands, and then he'd get a bunch of guys and put them in there. Nobody, okay. No, Rodney Broadbent from from Little Falls. Yeah. You know, Rod Broadbent. Yeah. He um, I got him a job playing with the McCoys. They hang on, Sloopy. So okay. he was with McCoys really? for a while. Wow. So when he comes out to see me, I go, "There's a lead guitar player from the McCoys," but. You know, it was Rick Derringer. We just bought the names, and then he put the band together and put suits on them and sent them out, you know? No kidding. The box tops, they do the letter and what, what, cry like a baby, and then they do disco music all night. Cool. And that, that's what he did. It's like those Stars on 45 records kind oh, of deal? Yeah, yeah that, that was an interesting time. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. So from there, uh, we're, you know, we're probably getting towards the 80s, early 90s, and that's about when I met you, by the way. So uh, I remember when you were born. Yeah, well... I don't quite remember that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Gum's got a story for that. But <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> but I do know, like, um, I, I was working at the Alien Big M in the early 90s, and said, that's when I met you. You know, was, you know, you were just this full-of-life guy coming in every day. My brother Tony worked there, didn't he? He was gone by the time I okay, got there. Big M, all right. Yep. But uh, like I said, you were in there every day, and we became friends from there. I'm, I'm there every day now because it's a beer store. Well, yeah, beer belly. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's, a, it's the new and improved Dilly Big What are you talking about? <laughs> it's always served. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So uh, I remember Stevie giving me this, and I've held on to it for all of these years. You're kidding me. I have. This is right from my personal collection. Stevie Rigo and the Cellar Dwellers. Do you know where that picture was taken? I'm, I'm dying to know because it's obviously in a cellar. 
West Hill, or well, um, Marine Corps League. It used to be West Hill School in yeah. the cellar. Really? And Ronnie Sterling got kind of paranoid because there was like asbestos. If you can see it, so <laughs> well, you know, I go, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't just, just don't breathe. <laughs> yeah, hold Matt, your breath. <laughs> just don't start it. Matt <laughs> Matt Stubbley took the picture. Remember, you know Matt. Yeah, yeah, Tommy I know Sterling. Matt. So. And I'll tell you, you know, looking at that picture, there's some guys in here that are, are rock and roll legends in oh, the yeah. Valley as well. You know, you got Dale Edwards right there, Joe Rossi, Rick DeJohn, who's still playing. Yeah. Yeah, he's with the posers. I, I don't know about Joe, and I know Dale. Joe, Joe lives across the street from me. He still plays once in a while. Does he? He's a great drummer. Oh, phenomenal. Dale, That's, who's got a voice like that, you know? I mean, people. I know. People don't, people don't realize just how much musical talent was and still is in this Valley. It's, cr- it's crazy, Dave, because... When I went on, first went on the road, you know, I'm thinking, because you got all these people from Million that are all, like, John Seymour and all them guys and Dale. And, right. And and when I went on the road, you know, I'm a pretty decent guitar player. People just went crazy, you know. I was like, holy crap, where does this guy come from? But around here, not like you got Justin Smith and, and, sure. and, and the guys from, you know, Jose. And the yeah, guys Jose from, Lopez, yeah. And Showtime, they're phenomenal. Yeah, you mean Last, Last Left's a really good band? Oh, I mean, yeah. You know, we're right down the street from the Rock Valley Brewery, and they have great bands in there yes. every weekend. And that's, you know, it's nice to see somebody bringing bands back because, you know, a lot of places, and I, and I get it, so, you know, there, there's costs involved, of course, and, and stuff like that. But, man, that's just something that's been lost through the years is, you know, having bands. I think it started to end when karaoke came out. If everybody remembers that, the big karaoke oh, that craze. Could, that couldn't kill bands. Come on. Uh, you'd be surprised. Really? But Stevie, right or wrong? I mean, uh, places that were having bands all of a sudden. You know what? It, it's one it's, of my it's pet, a little bit cheaper to have it. So My pet peeves is, uh, um, is um, DJs. Huh? Okay. Oh, yeah. Be, being a lot, you know, a lot. So sure. I, somebody would call me up. Do you know a good DJ? And I go, well, I can play anything. You know, what you, I can play anything from Madonna to... Willie Nelson, well, we're, you know, they want a DJ, you know, they're going to pay him six hundred dollars, you know. I go, I'll do, I'll do a better job for three hundred, you know, or whatever. But <laughs> DJs, uh, karaoke a little bit because everybody thinks they're a singer, you know. Oh, of course, okay. everybody thinks that they're in the shower it, and they, they sound just like Rod Stewart. It, right? it never died out though. I thought this is going to die out, but it's still pretty popular. It yeah, is, it is. You, I, I don't really, you know, around, yeah. I don't have nothing against it, you know. I mean, it is what it is. I'm I guess, to the point but... now where I play maybe. At the most, two or three, four times a month, and I'm yeah. happy. But I, I'll tell you something, though. I mean, mostly you go to, like, weddings and stuff like that, and it's usually a DJ it's now, DJs, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. They so can play everything. If okay. you like- yeah, you can play anything that anybody wants to hear because everybody's got their own genre and their own thing that they want to hear now, which, you know, I guess it's it's the times. What are you going to do? They can play anything. You take a band, like, remember the Alligators? You might yes, play. I do. Well, quick story. This guy hired me to play for his daughter's wedding, and... uh you know, we're all set, you know, and then he calls me up and he goes, well, he goes, my daughter decided she wants the alligators. Okay. You know, great band, but they, they couldn't play, you know, like Daddy's Little Girl or, right, or, right. Or, you know, so they're just doing, I think you did Louie Louie for the dollar dance, you know, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, I can see that. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be you know, fun. The band down, they're great, but they just, they're not a wedding band, you know. Sure, so, sure. So, I see the guy about a month later, and he goes, because <laughs> <laughs> they were good, but, you know, they all got drunk. And, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, that, you know, they, but a DJ. And had the maid of honor. <laughs> a DJ can play, and you know, a DJ can do anything, and, and plus you can. Right. I mean. So how many guys, you know, if you get these guys that just play acoustic guitar, there's a lot of good, great guys around. But sure. I don't think they could pull off a wedding. Right. I mean, it's, it's a whole different animal anyway. But I will say that uh, a few years back, my cousin got married. And instead of having a DJ, he had Last Left Play. And that was one of the funnest times we've had in a long time because there is really something to be said for having a live band there. It's just, to me, it, it, you can't beat it. There's there's uh, no better party. Did you know the drummers, uh, the drummer in that band, Stephen Shepherson? Do you know his father was Donnie Shepherson, the drummer for the Alligators? Really? Remember Donnie Shepherson? Yeah. Yeah. Well, his son is Stephen. They call him Shep. Yeah, yeah. The little guy there. Yeah. No kidding. Yeah. See, he you comes, learn something new every day. He comes out and sees mm-hmm. me, and, and um, me and me and his dad were pretty close, and you know, crazy musicians. I'm going to give you one story and one story only. Oh, here it goes. I'm not going to. I can't t- say it on air, but <laughs> but I told him that, and his his eyes get like that. I go, yeah, me and your dad did. <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> That's it. One story. There's a million of them, but that's the only one you're getting. Yeah, right. Yeah, he's a good little drummer. Sings yeah, good he is. Too. 
He is. His mother sang with me, Carrie, Carrie Allen. No kidding. You remember well, Carrie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carrie Slaughter. Yeah, yep. she sang it with me for a while when I, I was doing the duo thing. Okay, okay, yeah. See, it, it's all coming back. It's, du- it's doing the duo thing. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I, 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 you know what? That's a new podcast right there. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you the remember duo. I had the Golden Classist with Amy. Yes, Green. yes, I remember that. She's um, yeah, we we were together for quite a while. That know. was a, that was a great thing you were doing too with the Golden oh, Class. That was awesome. And it's you know, lucrative too, you know. You know, well, sure. These bands play out now. To, see what happened with COVID was when COVID came in. Like you take a band like um, a bigger band, you know, like Last Left, and they can't really be in it for the money unless maybe Showtime because they play a lot, you know, and they they get good bucks, but. Say you get three hundred dollars, you got six guys in a band. Oh, that does, yeah, yeah, that's, that's horrible. Right, Dave, yep. you got a light man and a sound man, and, and yep. you go out to eat at Denny's. You fill your car uh, with gas, and you you are home. You're, 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 you're break even. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that's a, yeah. you know, right, and, and that's the thing, and and really, I mean, you know, a, a bar or something like that for a Friday or Saturday night probably can't afford to pay much they, more than no, a five well, or six hundred bucks. That's a lot. Yeah, of money that's for a lot. Them, you know, and so I mean. Yeah, you can you can charge a cover charge, but even people aren't used to that anymore. No, you know, they'll they'll you, go to uh, you don't cover see charge, that. Uh, you know, you don't see that. Tough. You don't see that anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just the, the, like, well, like I said, things change, and I guess that's just the nature of the beast nowadays. I hadn't even thought about that. No cover charge stuff. I haven't seen that's, that in, like for well, they they had a cover at the music festival down here, wasn't it? Five right, bucks. Five bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who could complain about five or no, ten bucks? No, that's I mean, that's for the four thing. bands. Right, right. That's you know, and. and you know, like I said, you, you got to keep in mind those bands have got to be paid. Yeah, that's yeah. Then it's, I've seen before where it's five dollars to get in. Well, I'm not paying five dollars. And say, well, geez, you're going to buy a beer? It's going to cost you five dollars anyway. Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah. Well, it's like don't come in then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, seriously. It's yeah. like for Tullas, Brian, he has musical every night. It's like, and it's it's great. You know, is there a cover it, there or no? No. No. Okay. It, it just beer and um wine there's no liquor and there's never been no trouble in there it's always just you know just nice everybody having a good time yeah everybody having a good time good music yeah. and you know it's all different stuff the showtime um trio the trio plays because you know and i play over there and um uh max sheldon mm-hmm. all those guys uh F- phil uh our Curie. okay yeah i know him yep that that's great. I mean, you guys are keeping it going. That that's that's absolutely. Well, Brian yeah. Brian is he, he's uh, he plays keyboards too, but he's, he's got a nice thing going there. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely. got a thing this summer you might be interested in. Dave's called they call it uh, frat stock because of fratellos. He has it outside. He built a stage. Oh, no really? Kidding. This is like our yeah. th- This will be our third year. It's like all bands all day long. When it when is that? Um, probably I have to check it what out. What month? David. I think maybe August. August. Ooh. I'm not sure. Out there in the heat. Well, that's okay. Plenty of that cold beer that'll that'll solve That's, that problem. Well, no, it doesn't really. Well, you you don't think know, that it does? Upstate New York, you don't know. Could, you know well, it could yeah. snow. Oh, yeah. It, it could be a early, blizzard that day. Could be an too. early snow. Hold you on, know. guys, we got to get the snowblower out yeah. on the stage. Wait a minute. <laughs> but he has a bunch of bands, and um, I, I'll probably I usually get up and play with Showtime. How many Excellent. how many hours does he run it? I think. Uh, Probably right up until you can't with the noise ordinance. Right. 11 right. o'clock. Probably usually. like a 10 or 11 o'clock. Yeah. Then, yeah. yeah. Usually Pretty 11. much all day. It's and he's got, you know, beer and food and it's just a good time. He probably makes a lot of good money off the beer, you know? Oh, sure. I'm yeah. sure. Especially on a day like that, you know, where you got a lot of people coming in. Yeah. It's, it's a yeah. great thing. It, it really is. Huh. But uh, so, sounds like we need to do a remote. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. That'd be fun. I like it. It'd be a blast. I, I like it. Absolutely. But I mean, Stevie, you know, you're still busy. You're still out there making albums. You're still out there doing it. So I know like... Geritol. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, listen, go, what's he talking about? Yeah, really? <laughs> well, he used to be on drugs, but now he's on Geritol, you know? Yeah, that's, a, that's heavy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, but Geritol. You, you, you've got a new one called Surf and Turf. Uh, you just had Drinking with Lincoln, which I, I, I got to ask you. How did you possibly come up with that name? Because it's awesome. I took a hit of acid one night. And <laughs> <laughs> There's the album cover right there. <laughs> Drink it with Maybe Lincoln. you did. Look at it. That yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of looking at it. It looked like, like I got a hangover. Somebody said, well, geez, how old are I? Well, I, I think uh, Lincoln was 58 there. So. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a yellow submarine outfit or something there. We're going. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Hey. <laughs> It's a Beatles outfit. You're right. It, it, my it's, my it, producer, Bob Ockelbeeve. Sergeant Pepper era. Yeah, I my, thought he was peppering it. My producer, Bob Ockelbeeve, his son, 
Al's you know, he's a great kid, and he he had that uh, outfit. It's like a ringmaster type thing, and I, I just wore it that day. <laughs> but uh, directing so, the uh, circus. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it, it came the song came to me um it's probably about a guy that's wor- maybe worked in the Remington Arms and uh and his wife split up or whatever so he's paying child support and he works his butt off you know all week mm-hmm. and uh after he pays his rent you heard listen to the words after he pays his rent and his, his bills and food and everything he all he's got left is five dollars so he goes and, and there's, there's the Lincoln. Lincoln. Yeah. yeah. So he goes, you know, now I said, well, you couldn't even buy a beer for $5 now. I go, it's just, you know. Maybe a draft. So he puts the $5 bill on the bar and he just, bartender, I'm drinking with Lincoln. That's where I came from. That is great. <laughs> the That's guy's good. trying That's to, stuff. he's, uh, you know, he works his ass off all week, and he hasn't got nothing to show for it. So he's just drinking mm. with Lincoln. Yeah, that's 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 really awesome. I like it's, that. Extremely, you know, that that's so creative too, because you know, a lot of times, like people who aren't like maybe artistically inclined or whatever, would just oh, drink with a five dollar bill or something like that. To actually see the five dollar bill as Lincoln, and yeah. to, and to put that together, too. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that really does. And there was some press releases about it. I know we we've got those right here. Was, there we I go. Was, I was too fast on the draw you know, there. Got all kinds of press. Yeah, I did for a lot, of, a lot of write-ups. Yeah, that, that's Mark so, Sista, you know Mark, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he did he did one for uh, uh, the the new one too, Surf and Turf. He did a write-up on that. Yeah, that's and uh, I don't know what he's going to say. You know, he can say, "Oh, this sucks," but he's he's, he's very <laughs> <It> sucks. <laughs> he was he he was very complimentary of everything I did. You know, he's good. He's a uh, Justice McBride, I think, and uh, yeah, he's got three or four really really good bands. Yeah, definitely, and and you know, you mentioned Bob Aquaview. I know because oh, Bob's he's, my producer. Yeah, he's your producer, and he's got a studio, correct? Yes, and that's where you record your. your it albums. used to be Ock Rock when he was downtown Dell's Music down in that, and but now he's got it at his house. It's called Wayne Manor. He's you know Batman. That's where. <laughs> that's where he, I got a. I got. I was going to say that's yeah, is we, that we, where the idea for Surfer Turf came. I from? got a CD for you, and it's in my guitar case. <laughs> Uh, oh, okay, you guys. Excellent. So, yeah, this is where you get the Batman costume. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That is and awesome. That's an actual 1960s authentic Batman. We found it online. I ain't going to tell you what we paid for it. Well, just, listen, you just said the word authentic and online. And I think those two don't go together. It's like Army Intelligence, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> there it is. I knew that was coming. Yeah. He, he, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> But um, <laughs> it's it's I had the utility belt and and everything. It's just it's remember the show Batman. Yeah, yeah you know what? Yeah. I was telling Dave before before you got here that looking at that album, that's all I could think about was that episode. Remember where he was surfing against the Joker? It, that's true. There was an actual an episode where and we recorded that song Batman on on the um, Surf and Turf started out with I just wanted to do a couple of I love surf music. Sure, in you know, the Ventures and Pipeline and all that stuff. Walk don't run. Just it just snowballed into it became a, a bigger album, but we did Batman, and uh, not bragging, but it's am- it's amazing that we got like the sound effects like the Batmobile and really? the, the Joker laughing on there. If you listen oh. to it, I'd punch it. And we got this this girl that came in. She's a I can't remember her name. She's on the CD. Her name's on there, but she's like a uh, an opera singer. Anyway. Batman. It's like. It almost sounds wow. like a, it almost sounds like a synthesizer. Sure. You listen to it. Nah, 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 nah. Yeah, yeah. And um, Frank Tallarico on the keyboards, and it's just it's like holy. <laughs> I'm just great. going. Da, 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 That's all I'm doing, you know. I'm just yeah, all yeah. the stuff that I go. Bob, my fingers are getting sore, you know. <laughs> well, you have to change the pitch a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Wow. Oh, that that is that's. But awesome. I got one for you guys. It's my guitar case. And then there was none. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Stevie. Do you have the, I, I sent that to you, I think. Yes. Yeah. I got it right here. Um, but I wanted to see if you wanted to plug anybody as far as selling your CDs. Uh, any any well, particular places out there you wanted to talk about? Uh, Beer Belly Bob sells quite a bit of them. Um, they're all over the place. Alien. So you're back to your roots with Big M. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. They sell a lot you, of them. You just, um, the what outs. are you looking for there? But you looking for his I, outlets or? I got it right here where where they're sold. Oh, okay. All yeah. Right. See, I, yeah. He, 
I, he I, researches. I told, I, told, I told you before, sometimes I have to screw up just to keep him on his toes. Yeah. But I didn't screw up this time. I, gotta I, wanted, a, I, gotta I wanted to think I did. Put a plug in for uh, this girl that helps me out. Her name's um, Florence Willock. She sells my CDs and goes out and does that. And she's just, you know, kind of like a manager type thing. Well, she does you a know? tremendous job. That, that's yeah, for she, sure. Yeah, uh, she, you know, I, I wouldn't. I'm too lazy to go out. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I sold, you know, but... Listen, you just got to stand there, look pretty, and sound great. Okay. And the CD will sell itself. One, one of the two will work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is directly from Florence's Facebook page. So let's see. Surf and Turf is now on sale at, like you said, Beer Belly Bob's, uh, Mirabito, Wine Spirits, the Marine Corps League, the Elks Club. I'm assuming that's Illion, correct? Mm-hmm. Knights of Columbus and Illion, Frankfurt, uh, Franco's Frankfurt uh, Fratello Pizzeria, Heel Path Brewery, which is in Frankfurt. Yeah, that's good. Uh, let's see, Mohawk Community Market in Utica. Uh, Doctor Uniform. Oh, I'm sorry, they. That's in Herkimer. Utica's Doctor Uniforms. Okay, I see. Oh, sure. Uh, New Hartford Music and More Records, and I had to, so you can get them in a lot of places. We might have to get a few down here too. Yeah, no, you, you can. You, put, you need a little Falls Outlet for this. Yeah, we got a store here. I think, so I think she. Where, where'd we have them before? Some place we had them on, on Main Street, and the, and the bar. Oh, court. probably the shop. It was called oh. the shop. They had music there, but you could get drinks. Well, they, they closed. The place closed. Well, yeah, they closed. We, right. we left them a bunch of CDs, and then she went to, to get it, and they, she couldn't find no, no. If you remember the name, we can track down who it is. I think she already did, and they, oh. they were like, oh, well, no, I don't, know. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, anymore, okay, but, yeah. And I kind of, I go, well, we got space yeah. here right at Studio 25. Yeah, I got, so I, I, yeah. I got some. We, we got a gift, gift shop up front here with Little Falls. Stuff, cups and shirts and absolutely. Yeah. Okay. absolutely. I, I'll, I'll get as many as you want, Scott. I, I think I ordered like. Um, well, let's not put. Like, you know, I, there is a room limitation. You know, <laughs> if you start filling the building up here, <laughs> we'll start with well, ten. Listen, you know, yeah, we'll do, ten is a good th- number. This is going to be our promotion, right? We'll start with ten, and then maybe like Saturday, we'll have Dave dress up like Batman and sell him out front. There, there's not a. Any what do you think? chance in hell? Oh, okay. Well, Dave, you look good in a suit. Uh, I, I think so. You just, you, Scott just wants to see me in tights. It, <laughs> <laughs> you, look you know what? That. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's just something we'll I, never unsee. I, 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 never well, again. This is why I did that. Because yep. you will not ever ask me again. <laughs> well, I'll, never, I'll never unsee it. So yeah. why not? You know? For what we paid for the outfit, it sits in my yeah. uh, closet. You know, it's like once in a while I get a buzz on, I'll put it on. You know. But, oh. uh, you know, it would have been great if you'd have no. worn for this. Go, go on, yeah. Oh, God, that would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah, Come on. I, yeah, Dave, it's so freaking hot, though. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, true. Oh, my goodness. No, that 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 is absolutely amazing, brother. I'm, I'm just so glad to see you still out there, still making music, and it's just great to see. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, and, and tell me, you, you've still got more on the way. Yeah, we're going to be doing another one pretty soon. Me and Bob have been talking about doing another one. Um, Originals, okay, excellent. Uh, nice. Surf and turf is just cover music, but we're gonna. I got a, I got a probably one or two more good ones in me, and um, like I, I was telling you earlier, uh, planning a show. We're gonna do a show. Uh, not sure where yet, but I'm gonna be doing some of my originals, and then I'm gonna be doing some impersonations, probably of. Um, I do Bob Dylan and Buddy Holly, of course, and um, uh, Willie Nelson, just. Dress up like them and sure. look like them, you know, with the lights, you know, and yep. do that mm-hmm. whole thing. But I think I'm going to be playing a little bit over there. You're going to be playing yeah, over here on our other stage. But, uh, yes, you are. Then, uh, you know, I'm not saying I'm going to retire, but that might be my swan song, you know, just maybe. Why? Why would you retire? Why would you even think about it? If you're having fun. Well, I probably still play it like Vitello's, you know, once in a while, but yeah, slow down a little bit. Slow I down. Down. When's, I when's the next time you're okay. playing? What's that? When's the next time you're playing? Um, Saturday. This Saturday at Fratello's? Yes. And what time does it start? Uh, usually it's 6 to 9. 6 to 9. But I, it'll be on my Facebook because sometimes he has an act after me, so I'll pay, start at 5. Okay. But it's great food. It's good atmosphere. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Oh, maybe if the dog's game huh? get rained out, gets rained out, we'll have to check that out. Yeah, I know. Come on over. Yeah, because yeah. we do the, the broadcast coverage for the Diamond Dogs. Oh, okay. And they have a game Saturday night. But, hey, yeah. <laughs> there's a lot of rain coming up in the forecast. A lot of so. rain. Yeah, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, my friend. Well, you know, we've been talking about it, and we've been looking forward to it. And I think it's time. We're going to take a commercial break, and then we're going to have Stevie Rigo right over here on our other stage to do a quick song for us. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Visit My Little Falls and stay connected with the latest news, information, and events in the city and the area. Our mission is to generate interest in the community and connect residents in a more meaningful way by facilitating deeper conversations about how these stories will shape the future of the Mohawk Valley. Join thousands of weekly visitors who stay up to date with feature stories, interviews, videos, our event calendar, and print publication, The Mohawk Valley Express. It's a about timely local news for the community, keeping citizens informed about important issues, telling about the people who live and work here, and giving locally owned businesses the opportunity to reach a very targeted audience of locals and tourists alike. It's a whole new form of media-rich content developed specifically for today's mobile lifestyle and listeners. You can download our iOS app in the iTunes store, listen to our podcast, or sign up for our weekly email newsletter. Stop by today. You'll be glad you did. Well, so I said, um, I'm going to put the show together with my originals and, um, go through the whole thing, and then I'm going to probably do some impersonations like Willie Nelson, Bob Dylan, maybe Buddy Holly. Buddy was a good singer, but I, I tend to do some of the guys that can't sing that good, like Johnny Cash. Hello, <laughs> I'm Johnny Cash. <laughs> but um, I'll be doing some of them, probably dress up like them and, and get the Willie hair and the headband, and uh, Bob Dylan, I don't know, maybe some pancake makeup. But... All the girls I've loved before Traveled in and out my doors You know, do, do that, and I'll do probably do Julio then I'm trying to think of um, Dylan And gather on children with her you will And the touch the waters around you go Your son and your daughters, they don't understand so, then, like I said, I did Buddy Holly for, I haven't done, done any in a while, but um, he died when he was 21, so I'm, I'm 50, Dave, so, you know, doing Buddy Holly at my age, but anyways, I'll try to do a little Buddy Holly for you. If you knew Peggy Sue. Why I feel blue about Peggy I Peggy, sir, I Oh, I love you, girl Yes, I love you, Peggy Sue Peggy Sue, Peggy Sue Oh, how oh, oh, my young son you Oh, Peggy I Peggy, sir, I Because I love you, girl And I need you, Peggy Sue
right now. That was awesome. I, that was a, a fantastic acoustic version of Peggy Sue by the late great Buddy Holly. <laughs> Stevie Rigo has given me and Dave a couple of copies of his new CD, Surf and Turf, and we are going to have that here for sale at Studio 25, along with all of the other places that I mentioned, too. And we're going to put that in the liner notes for the show as well, uh, because you are going to want a copy of this album. It is awesome. I can't wait to hear that. It, it, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm telling it's you. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> it sounds just, fun, is, fun is the whole point, right? <laughs> and you know what? Yeah. Every time I listen, I'm just going to picture you in the Batman costume. No, I'm not going to do that. Don't worry about it. I'm going to picture Dave in it. Yeah. <laughs> no, we're not. We'll, we'll, we'll we're, that not off we're not going there. Yes, we will. <laughs> <laughs> and Stevie was also kind enough to bring us down a couple of Little Falls diamonds, which we really, really appreciate. Beautiful pieces, too. My goodness. Look it's at one that. Of my, it's one of my hobbies. I, I started um, actually um, mining them when, in the 50s. Uh, Diamond Street. Yep. I used to go up there with my little hammer and stuff. And yeah. So I've been doing that for a while. I've I've been infatuated with them for years, so I got quite a collection of them. So they're beautiful. They are. They they five hundred really million years old. Yeah, are I they really that, that old? Yeah. Five hundred million. I didn't. I didn't realize that. For New sure. York, New York was. They didn't uh, look a, a bit over three hundred million. You know, in my mind. So <laughs> somebody says, "Well, maybe they got dinosaur stuff in them." I go, that "Dinosaurs, <laughs> dinosaur <like>, poop." <laughs> yeah, five, sixty-five that was, million years ago. For that that yeah. was five million years ago. Yeah. I think yeah. you're off by about just a, I, just a little bit. Just a little I bit. Think, I think it was a Cambrian age when uh, New York State was actually underwater. So that they're yeah, and this is really the only place you can get them. Yeah, that are. That nice, you know. That is absolutely. awesome. There's Jeez. some imposters around, you know, like Arkhamer diamonds. Right, right. Mexican <laughs> Herkimers. Everybody's got to give me Herkimer, Arkhamer, but Mexican Herkimers. I haven't heard of that one. Where's that? It looks like a I, looks like an Academian nut. There. Everybody wants to be a Herkimer. What makes them unique is they're double terminated. You know, they, they most of the crystals you'll see. Are sure. only, Hold that up there a little bit, Scott. Double terminated. Yeah, they got. Uh, okay. All right. So the two points is yes, what you're saying. That, that's what makes them unique. Okay. I did not know that. There you go. So he sees we're getting a geology. I was lesson. just going to say that you came for the music, music. and you got a geology. This I know. Is great. M the M and G. It's your next album. It, it's a it's another, it's another show though, isn't it? <laughs> we're up to we 12. got a lot of shows. Don't we? <laughs> yeah, we're up we're up to show number twelve now. Stevie's just going to have his own podcast series with us. That's uh, <laughs> well, you know, that wouldn't be so bad. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But Stevie. Thank you so much Thank you for guys. coming down here and playing the music for us, bringing the CDs, bringing the diamonds. Everybody, if you've got anything at all going on Saturday night, drop it. Get to Fertels in Frankfurt on Main Street starting at 6 o'clock, maybe 5, depending. Uh, to check out Stevie, I'm sure he's going to be playing some new tunes. But again, Stevie, thanks a million. We appreciate it, and we hope you come back soon. Thank you, Dave and Scott, for having me. I appreciate it. I had a good time. All right, buddy. Have a good one, and thank you for listening. We'll see you next time on Put a Mic in It.